Hi guys, I have another Copic coloring card tutorial for you today and today I'm using some Halloween stamps from Lawn Fawn and a square um, die from Simon's Stamp. And this is going to be a one layer card. Uh, it is the challenge over at Lawnscaping and I thought I would join just because I love challenges and I'm so fall in love with the lawns of fawn stamps. So I'm gonna do some la layering with masking. So I have stamped out my little ghosts onto some masking paper, also from Simon's and Stamp, and I'm cutting it out uh, just on the black line, not leaving any kind of white on the outside, uh, but leaving most of the black line left anyway, and just cutting all those masks that I wanted. I actually stamped more than I needed. I'm only gonna need the two of the hair pieces and two of the ghosts. So to make my card I'm using this square die and I am putting it up at the bend of the card um, so it doesn't cut off at the bend. It keeps the bend so then you get a square card with stitches on three of the sides. But I kind of like it. It's gonna be a one layered card. I had to do something. Uh, then I'm gonna start stamping and there's a lot of stamping in this to make it do what I want to do. Uh, start with a Happy Halloween which comes from the Booyah stamp set um, and also I am uh, using some of these uh, hair things. Those are the first layers. And you want, when you do a layered stamp, you want to layer the things that you think will be closest to you in the foreground first. So I first stamp the hair because I don't want to see the line of the ghost's head on top of the hair. So I stamp the hair and then I'm fiddling with these masks and putting them on. So then that is kind of first layer. Second layer is going to be the ghosts. So I'm stamping the ghost and the masks masks off the top of the head of the ghost and leaves the hair there instead. Um, in between here I'm gonna add the little faces because they looked so strange without faces but I'm going to put the masks on top of these faces uh, because I am going to use the house from Happy Haunting, Lawn Fawn's, I think it was last year's Halloween stamp set. Um, you may correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but I, I got them all this year. So, And then I'm adding the house and I'm very, very careful and trying to press down everywhere on the house. The first time around I did this it didn't turn around so good and that is why I had some stamping on my masks because you can use those masks as much as you want. I am uh, adding a little uh, spider and he's gonna go from the ceiling so I'm just taking one of the uh, stamps, those um, masks that I didn't use um, just masking off the roof there so it looks like it's hang underneath. Um, all of these masks I am putting together in the same bag as the stamp sets themselves so that I can use them again for another card another day. Um, I'm going to continue to do a whole bunch of stamping, uh, extra stamping on this. There is some stitching uh, a little bit here and there on the um, monster ghost and then I'm gonna add a moon up here. I could have done better masking for this uh, because I'm gonna miss a part of the moon but I'm gonna fill that in with a Copic multiliner. Everything is gonna be colored with Copics so a Copic multiliner is very good to have especially for when you miss things like this. This is the zero one one yeah, zero 01 marker. I could just have used the zero 02, which I also have in my stash, uh, which I'm actually going to use a little later during the coloring to give it a black line for the ground. And then I'm adding the last little details, which is a couple of those really cool bats, um, just to kind of fill up the dead space. Then I'm starting with the moon. I'm gonna use the Y 
double zero, E42 and the Y11 uh, to make the moon. Then I'm going to fill in the whole uh, house with some black pens. I'm using T8, T6 and T4 so it gets pretty dark but not as dark to lose uh, the details in the stamp because I really like these stamps and I wanted to keep as much as possible. However, I want them to be um, darker and mm, because then, then you get to see the ghost kind of pop out a little bit. Um, I am going bit by bit. Usually I don't do this when I make videos. Usually I try to uh, make one color at a time but um, I wanted to show you the best way of getting a good blend is actually going bit by bit by bit so you keep your paper wet from the uh, inks and then it will blend much much easier. So my little uh, Frankenstein ghost will be green. I think he's quite cute as a little greeny ghost and then uh, I'm going I use the lighter tees for those screws in his head and the darker tees for his hair. Also go in for the hair for her in those darker colors and I'm trying to get it all bumpy so it looks like her hair. And then I'm using the lighter tees to make her uh, skin. Also using a little bit of violet in her hair. The BV20s are what I personally feel one of the most perfect Halloween sky colors because it has that little little bit of violet in it but it's a very very blue grayish color I really 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 like it so I'm using the BV25, BV23 and BV20 to make the sky I could have gone over once more to reduce the streaking but I didn't now I'm using the BG70 and the BG72 for the bottom and they have a very big color difference. So I'm doing the tip to tip method where I take the lighter pen and dip it on the tip of the darker pen and then going from the dark towards the light with that to kind of blend better. Um, just to make a little bit of better blend around the happy Halloween. And that is the card for today. And if you like it, please thumbs it up. It means a lot to me. If you have any questions, just comment down below. And as you see, the background looks like this. So I would use it on a panel if it wasn't for a one layer card. And if you have any questions, just comment down below. Down below you find all the details of all the cards um, the supplies in the cards and here are two other lawn phone videos that I recently made. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!